It's time now for a look at some of the day's business news with France 24's Cole Stangler. Cole, you're starting with the IMF. Its executive board says that it is reaffirming support for its embattled director. That's right. We're talking, of course, about Kristalina Georgieva. She's come under fire for allegations that she modified data at her previous job at the World Bank. According to an external report, Georgieva intervened to benefit China's ranking in the bank's annual ease of doing business index back in 2018. She calls those allegations unfounded. Support from the executive board, though, is a major boost. It comes at a time when the scandal had been threatening to overshadow this week's annual meetings between the World Bank and the IMF. And those IMF meetings, Cole, got underway yesterday, among others. The Secretary General of the UN also made an appearance. Yeah, that's right. Antonio Guterres is addressing a panel late Monday, uh, highlighting the economic toll of the pandemic and also focusing on the gap between rich and poor countries. As wealthy countries recover, the developing world suffers from limited vaccine access and fewer resources to spend. Take a listen. Countries affected by conflict and crisis countries have the least fiscal space to invest in the policies they need for a sustainable, inclusive recovery, policies like renewable energy, social protection and health care. Many of these states are also on the front lines of climate change and the brutal assault on nature, which exacerbates risks that go well beyond their immediate impacts. Unless these threats are addressed, they could fuel growing mistrust in institutions, deepening fractures, and turning back the clock on years of progress on prevention and peace building. Well, moving on now to the day's trading action. Major European indexes in negative territory, uh, concerns about inflation and rising energy costs weighing heavily on investors. Uh, on investors, you can see there, uh, all the, the major indexes down more than 1%. Major Asian indexes uh, also in the red uh, shares on the Hang Seng and the Kospi over in Seoul uh, with the heaviest losses there. And speaking of those rising energy prices, Cole, that will be at the agenda at today's EU-Ukraine summit. Yeah, Europe's soaring natural gas prices really shining a light on the high stakes of that Nord Stream 2 pipeline, uh, that pipeline still waiting final approval, but would double gas supplies from Russia to Germany and also divert an existing route through Ukraine, potentially depriving Kiev of about a billion euros a year in transit fees. At today's summit, EU leaders are expected to assure Ukraine the country will continue to ship gas. They're also expected to roll out a new investment package worth some six and a half billion euros. But, but natural gas prices are not the only ones rising coal oil as well. Yeah, global benchmark Brent crude now trading over $80 a barrel, while over in the U.S. prices just crossed that threshold for the first time in seven years. Shirley Sipon explains what's driving the upsurge and how it's affecting consumers. Consumers can't miss the surge in fuel prices. I pay 10% more every time I fill the tank. That's not only an impression. Oil prices are up, reaching a several-year high. After a long slowdown of the economy, due to the COVID pandemic, production has restarted across the globe. Industries need energy, but supplies are limited. OPEC and other oil producers have recently decided not to significantly ramp up their output to ease the market. Oil prices are likely to remain at a high level. Why? If demand remains this high across the world and if oil producers continue to limit production, as they are doing now, then prices could remain high for quite a while. The oil price hike comes amid soaring natural gas prices, which have started to spill over to the oil market. When gas prices rose as temperatures started dropping in the northern hemisphere and with supplies being tight, some power plants turned to oil, pushing prices up. And finally, Cole, you're also looking at a massive new investment plan in France that Emmanuel Macron will be announcing later this morning. Yeah, that's right. The five-year plan dubbed France 2030, designed to help create so-called industrial champions. Uh, those are firms in a number of strategic high-tech fields, including the auto, aerospace, and energy sectors. And Macron is also expected to announce support for small nuclear reactors, emphasizing their role in fighting climate change. Well, the spending plan also aims to counter increased competition from the U.S. and China. Uh, Aaron, we don't know the final price tag on this yet, but reports say it could be up to 30 billion euros. Uh, we should know more just at the top of the hour when it's actually announced. All right, Cole. Well, we'll be following that as it comes in. Thank you, Cole Stangler, for the business news.